Hi, I know I wasn't really supposed to do this one here, um, but I'll make a quick advice video for the ordinary level maps only. So if you're doing foundation or higher, you can switch off now. This is not for you. Um, right, so just a small bit of advice about uh, the 2014 project maps paper. Um, so the paper is split into two halves. There's and um, each half is worth the same amount of marks on each paper. So in each paper, the section A and section B, and section A is worth 150 marks. Section B is worth 150 marks. Um, however, section A has six questions, and section B only has three. Section A should be more straightforward and just basic mathematics without any tricks thrown in. Section B is designed specifically to be tricky. Its whole point is to check for intuitive intelligence. Um, where you're meant to be applying your math skills to some kind of everyday situation. Um, now, ideally, according to the syllabus makers, the questions you see in section B should be things that challenge you that you're not familiar with. Um, and what you need to do is try and remain calm and use your common sense and don't get overwhelmed by uh, maths panic. Um, so, what I find about section B is even though the questions are a little bit odd, they're actually generally easier than the ones in section A as far as the actual maths involved that um, it's just a little bit tricky and once you see past the it's like a, a show of smoke and mirrors and once you get past that keep calm keep common sense in your mind the actual maths in it isn't too bad um, so yeah obviously the advice I'd give anyone in order level maths is just to try everything and keep your work clear and when you get your answer, preferably put your answer in a little red box, even like primary school, answer equals whatever. And that way it'll make the examiner want to pass you because your work is so well laid out. And also um, <clears throat> I'll have a rough work column as well. And anything you even think of during the exam, make sure that you write it down. Uh, don't do anything in your head. Don't leave any steps. Um, that's d d d just simple tips of how to maximize your mark in maths. So let's imagine if you're on the borderline of will I pass it, will I fail it? Then these little things can make the difference that push you up past the 40% threshold. Now, um, another thing a tip that I would give you while doing the maths exam is let's imagine there's a question say a question in section B where it has loads of little parts to it um, say it has six parts and on part two you get stuck and you don't know how to do it but the answer to part two is needed to be able to do part three four five I would certainly let's imagine you can't do part two at all I would make some kind of an answer attempt at it and get an answer for part two even though you know the answer is wrong just so that you can unlock part three four and five because the fact is even though your answer to part two might be wrong um oh, for fuck's sake Jesus yes nah. yeah even though your answer to part two might be wrong um there is, it would be a bad move to leave all the other parts blank just because that one part boxed you. What I would do is um, just write down an answer to part two and you could even write a note beside it saying that you assume it's wrong. However, use that answer to move on and do the next steps in the question. Um, here's a perfect example of it. Have a look at this. So you have on the sample paper, there's question nine, the one about the wheat. And uh, you may or may not recognize that as being a DYDX question. Now, hopefully you would, but if you didn't, this question might fox you. Question two, where you have to find the amount of nitrogen in order to maximize the amount of wheat produced. Now, if that ant question had foxed you, it would cut you off from being able to do question three and poss possibly question four. In that situation, if you didn't know how to do part two, just write down any answer at all and use that answer to make an attempt at part three and part four. And if the maths you use in part three and four are good, even though the figure you're using is wrong, 
you're going to get the lion's share of the marks going for parts three and four. Also, a quick tip anyway, if you see a question that you suspect might be DYDX like this, um, then if they use the word maximize, in fact, anywhere on the maths paper, if they use the word maximize, then immediately DYDX whatever equation you get and put the DYDX symbol as being equal to zero. That's what you do when you see the word maximize. Now, so that's all. I, I told you it wasn't much, but it's just a few small tips on how to go about your project maths exam this year. Good luck.